In this video, we're going to cover the anatomy and overview functions of the kidneys and urinary system. Let's start this lecture by first taking a look at the frontal overview of the urinary system and then zoom into each structure and break it down in further detail. The urinary system consists of the two kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. The kidneys are bean-shaped organs that are located behind the abdominal cavity, behind the peritoneum, one on each side of the vertebral column. There's the right kidney and the left kidney. It's about the size of a clenched fist. If we're just talking about the kidneys, we refer to the renal system. It's about the kidneys, okay? Now, on top of each kidney is an adrenal gland, which produces and releases several hormones in the body. The right kidney is actually slightly lower than the left kidney due to the presence of the liver in the upper right quadrant. And the kidneys are connected to the ureters, which go all the way down to the pelvic cavity, where they connect behind the bladder. Ureters transport urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder, and the urinary bladder is found in the pelvic cavity. It's a smooth muscle-walled sac that stores urine. Let's take a closer look at the bladder. The walls of the bladder are made up of the detrusor muscle, which is a smooth muscle that allows the bladder to contract, to excrete urine, or relax to hold or store urine. The sympathetic relaxes the detrusor muscle to hold the urine, and the parasympathetic contracts the detrusor muscle causing urination. Think para makes you pee, okay? So the urine that is produced in the kidneys travels down the ureters, okay? These ducts carry urine to the urinary bladder, which is then eliminated via the urethra. The urethra transports urine from the bladder to the outside. Now, in women, the urethra is relatively short. It's a short and straight tube that comes from the neck of the bladder, okay? to the outside, whereas in males, the urethra is longer. This is a passageway for both urination and ejaculation. All right, and the prostate gland surrounds the urethra, just below the neck of the bladder here. This is why middle-aged to older-aged men may have difficulty passing urine. As the prostate gland enlarges, the urethra may become partially blocked, preventing the flow of urine. So that's the overview of the urinary system. We have the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. Let's now subtract complexity and zoom in on one of the kidneys and break down the layers and internal structures. The kidneys are surrounded by intricate layers of fascia and fat. Around each kidney is a renal capsule, which is a layer of fibrous connective tissue that protects the inner structures. The next layer is the perinephric fat or perirenal fat, which is just fat surrounding the kidney. Okay, this right here. And then there's the renal fascia, also known as gerotus fascia or peri perirenal fascia, which encloses the kidneys and adrenal glands. And outside the fascia, there's another fat tissue layer called the perirenal fat. Okay, that's the outside. Let's break down the internal structures. Okay. We can divide the kidney into an outer region called the renal cortex and an inner region called the renal medulla. Let's highlight these. The renal cortex is the outer portion. This is surrounded by the renal capsule and connective tissue. The cortex extends into the medulla. These columns here between the medulla, we can refer to these as renal columns. The renal columns extend downward from the cortex through the medulla. Next is the renal medulla. This is the inner portion of the kidney, which is composed of renal pyramids, these dark striated triangular shaped structures that look like Doritos, look like chips, okay? Now, a renal lobe or kidney lobe is made up of these two regions, a renal pyramid and the renal cortex above it. So there's one lobe and another lobe, and we can see the renal columns divide the kidney into several lobes. And going back to these Dorito-shaped structures, the base of the pyramid, the pyramids is directed towards the cortex and the apex toward the hilum, which we'll get into in a minute. Urine comes down from the apex, comes down the apex of the pyramids, and at the end of a renal pyramid, the apex is called a renal papilla. 
which is a collection or bundles of collecting ducts that transport urine to the calyces. You see these dark striped lines here? These are collecting ducts, which exports urine down the renal pyramid. Then the renal papilla opens to the minor calyx. This is a minor calyx, and this is another one here. These minor calyces collect urine from the pyramids, and when several minor calyces come together, they form a major calyx. And the major calyces join together to form the renal pelvis, which is this funnel-shaped structure which funnels urine into the ureter. If we follow through, urine drains into the ureter, okay, which will then transport urine down towards the bladder, where it exits the kidney through the hilum. The hilum, this is the entry and exit point. So the veins, nerves, lymphatics, and ureters that supply the kidneys enter and leave the renal hilum. This right here. And this leads us to the kidney blood supply. But before we move on, let's do a quick recap on what we've just covered. So we have the renal cortex, the renal medulla, the renal column that extend downwards. The renal medulla is composed of renal pyramids where the base is towards the cortex and apex towards the hilum. And then we have the papilla. Let's take a look at the path of urine drainage. Urine drains from the pyramids, the collecting duct, and then to the papillary duct, and then to the minor calyx, and then to the major calyx, and then we have the renal pelvis, which transports urine into the ureter and then eventually to the bladder. Okay, let's go through the arterial supply of the kidney and venous drainage of the kidney. The kidneys are supplied with blood via the renal arteries, which branch directly from the abdominal aorta, the descending aorta, at the level of the superior mesenteric artery. About 20% of the cardiac output goes to the kidneys via the renal arteries. So here's the left renal artery, and the other one is the right. And the renal arteries lie behind the renal veins, which are the veins that drain the kidneys, which then go into the inferior vena cava. Here's the left renal vein draining the left kidney. The left renal vein is longer because the IVC, the inferior vena cava, is slightly more to the right of the midline. Let's break this down further. Let's go through the arterial supply. Starting with the renal artery, which enters the kidney through the hilum, the renal artery then divides into segmental arteries. They supply segments of the kidney. There are five different segmental arteries that supply five different vascular renal segments. From the segmental artery, the next branch is the interlobar artery because it supplies the lobes of the kidney. Recall what a lobe is. It's a renal pyramid with a cortex above it. So the interlobar artery, the artery goes between the lobes, passes through the renal columns to reach the cortex. From the interlobar arteries, it branches off to these arteries known as arcuate arteries. Look at the shape of these arteries. It's an arc. It arcs between the medulla and cortex. And from here, it branches off to the interlobular arteries. And then from here, let's zoom in closer. The interlobular artery gives rise to the afferent arterioles or afferent glomerular arterioles, which supply about 1 million nephrons in each kidney. Nephrons are the functional units of the kidney and the urinary system, and they consist of two parts, the renal corpuscle and a tubule that extends from the renal corpuscle. We're going to go through the structure of the nephron in more detail in the next part of this lecture. It's going to be a walk in the park after we finish up the blood flow in the kidney. Focusing back on the afferent arterioles, the afferent arterioles supply the glomerulus, which is a tuft of capillaries that is surrounded by a fluid-filled capsule called Bowman's capsule. The proximal end of this renal tubule surrounds the glomerulus, okay? This right here. The glomerulus and Berman's capsule together form the renal corpuscle, which is the first part of a nephron. So each glomerulus is supplied with blood by an afferent arteriole. It carries blood to the glomerulus, where it gets filtered, and what doesn't get filtered comes out of the efferent arteriole, or efferent glomerular arteriole. A way to remember this is afferent equals arrived and efferent equals exit. It exits out of the glomerulus. Now the efferent arteriole, which carries blood away from the glomerulus, goes to form a capillary network around the renal tubules, the peritubular capillaries and vasa recta, before returning to the venous system. 
From the peritubular capillaries, it drains into the interlobular vein or cortical radiate vein, which then goes into an arcuate vein and then into the interlobar vein. So it's coming down the renal columns, which then drains into the renal vein, which then goes into the inferior vena cava. It exits out of the hilum and into the inferior vena cava. It's basically the reverse pathway of the arterial supply, but with veins. So that's one way that you can remember it. So you're just going up to the nephron and then coming back down and exiting out of the hilum and goes into the inferior vena cava. That's the blood supply. And the line box here on the left shows the nephron associated vessels. Let's now take a closer look at the nephrons. Nephrons are the functional units of the kidneys. And like we mentioned before, there are about 1 million in each kidney. Each nephron, as we mentioned before, consists of the renal corpuscle and a renal tubule that extends from the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle consists of the glomerulus, a tuft of capillaries that is surrounded by Bowman's capsule. This is the filtering structure that forms a filtrate from blood. This filtrate leaves the renal corpuscle and enters the tubule and is converted into urine. The segment of the tubule that drains Bowman's capsule is the proximal tubule or proximal convoluted tubule, PCT. Then the next part of the tubule is the loop of Henle, which dips into the renal medulla. And each loop consists of a descending limb, thin segment of ascending limb, and the thick segment of ascending limb, which leads to the distal convoluted tubule and then into the collecting ducts. Now there are two types of nephrons, cortical nephrons and juxtamedullary nephrons. About 20% of nephrons are juxtamedullary, so the cortical nephrons are the most abundant type of nephrons. Let's go through the differences. The cortical nephrons are located in the renal cortex. The glomeruli are located in the outer layer of the cortex, and they have short loops of Henle that dip slightly into the medulla. It's quite short, quite cute. So here's the proximal tubule, followed by the loop of Henle, and then the distal, distal tubule, which connects to the connecting duct. In the juxtamedullary nephrons, the glomeruli are located in the inner layer of the cortex, right next to the medulla, and their henle are long, allowing them to penetrate deep into the medulla. Same thing, we have the proximal tubule, the long loop of henle, and the distal tubule. But juxtamedullary nephrons' capillary network are known as the vasa recta, whereas with the cortical nephrons, it's the peritubular capillaries. Okay. Now that we've covered the structure, let's break down the overview functions of the kidneys and the important physiological processes that we'll cover in other renal lectures. The kidneys filter blood. Like we covered earlier, 20% of cardiac output goes to the kidneys via the renal arteries, and the nephrons filter the blood. Filtration is the first step in urine formation. Next, the kidneys reabsorb the majority of the filtrate into the blood from the tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries and right back into the inferior vena cava. We reabsorb 99% of the water and solutes back into the bloodstream. So after the nephrons filter the blood, the majority of the filtrate goes back into the bloodstream. And because we reabsorb 99%, the kidneys then excrete the remaining 1% as urine. The kidneys excrete metabolic waste products such as urea from the metabolism of amino acid, uric acid from nucleic acids, and other metabolites. The kidneys also get rid of foreign substances, chemicals, food additives, and drugs. So the four physiological processes we're going to break down in other renal lectures include filtration, tubular reabsorption, tubular secretion, which is the secretion of solutes from the peritubular capillaries into the tubular fluid, and then urine excretion. So everything that is filtered or secreted but not reabsorbed remain in the tubules and eliminated from the body. These gorgeous processes allows the kidneys to regulate water concentration and inorganic ion composition, electrolytes, which include sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and phosphate ions. So for example, if you increase your salt uptake, your kidneys will increase the amount of sodium and chloride excreted to balance the intake or to match the intake. It also helps regulate blood pressure by controlling water and salt and regulates pH by secreting hydrogen or reabsorbing bicarbonate. 
The kidneys also act as endocrine glands. They secrete erythropoietin, which stimulates the production of red blood cells and also produces active vitamin D. They also secrete renin, which is an enzyme important in the control of blood pressure. And one last thing is gluconeogenesis, which is glucose synthesis. So during fasting, the kidneys synthesize glucose from amino acids and other precursors and release it into the blood to increase your blood glucose level. So these are all the functions of the kidney, and we're going to go through the physiological processes in other renal lectures. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.